All right, CMD Boxing Reports. This is Ronell here reporting here, and I'm back at it for the boxing fanatics. All right, so got to see old Vasily Lomachenko versus Anthony Corolla. You know, now I'm going to be frank with you. Now, last night I was going to do a live stream, um, but it was like I was doing so many things like multitasking, you know, like looking at other videos while looking at the fight. And that kind of drained me. All right. Now, I was watching the undercars, man. The undercars was amazing. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, I should be doing the live stream on these undercars as well. All right. However, you know, I just didn't get up to it. I said, well, you know, like I said, I was getting tired from doing all that multitasking and stuff. And you know during the uh like to the final undercar bout um i just passed out woke up looked at my uh tablet and seeing that the fight had ended i mean the whole entire you know espn fight car was over i was like darn it i missed the fight all right so you know i watched it again this morning though you know i got my um you know my chance to see what Lomachenko had did. I wanted to see how did uh, Anthony Corolla, how he handled uh, Lomachenko. Did he try to put on pressure? Did he try to move forward and all? You know, yeah, I did see, uh, read some, read some articles on it as well. But, um, you know, it's was, was just like watching the action. You know, that's what all I likes to see. Okay, I want, I want to see the action, what really happened, right? So from what I've seen, Anthony Corolla, all right, this this fight kind of reminded me of you know like a Joe Kalzaki versus you know a Roy Jones or so whatever you know but what I meant by that is like Anthony Corolla okay was going into this fight you know he was saying he's going to uh you know shock the world this that the third but I guess when he you know felt Lomachenko's power seeing Lomachenko's ring IQ, seeing his, his, you know, mental, you know, his mental game and everything. Anthony Corolla just <laughs> balled up and, you know, he was a punching bag for Vasily Lomachenko, you know, until the fourth round. Now, I think it was what the third round when he had that knockdown, uh, you know, I was confused on like what happened here. I, I didn't see the guy's glove touch the canvas or anything. So how is he going to cause that a knockdown? But, you know, they started explaining, you know, the commentators saying that, you know, he, he, his butt had touched the ropes, you know, when Lomachenko had hit him. Meaning that it was, you know, hey, the bottom rope that held him up. But, you know, after that incident happened, okay, the round ended. We're going into the fourth round. Uh, Corolla did the same exact thing, but the ref didn't call on that. I mean, he, he could have been knocked down like three times, all right? throughout this whole entire fight. It was like two more times when Anthony Corolla was up against the ropes and Lomachenko hit him. Corolla back bottom side touched the bottom rope. Okay, meaning the bottom rope was hanging, you know, holding him up. But maybe, you know, the ref, you know, he had, you know, thought in his own mind that he caused enough confusion with the first one. So he just let the other two go until, okay, Anthony Corolla got caught. I think it was a right hook left hook wasn't it? it was a right hook you know right right, right in the back of the air Whew, done i mean he, he just fell yo i mean like like a tree okay he just tumbling it's just timber bam flat on his face all right and you know the ref he went to go uh, count then he stopped waved it off and i said nah man you, you can't you can't do it he was explaining to the dude man said hey man listen i love you bro you know i, I don't want to see you get hurt and the ref he, hey he did the right thing all right now with this okay this fight here i, I had seen yeah man <sighs> vasily lomachenko looked very impressive all right and i was saying to myself man i, I remember is when uh freddie roach was saying that uh what's his name oh, terrence crawford is the number one pound for pound him and uh you know uh earl spence and i was saying to myself maybe i have to think about that but you know i thought about some of the things that um terrence crawford did but 
you know, like did in his career, you know, became a three, you know, three division champion. He was undisputed. Okay. That's the only things that Lomachenko was not undisputed. Okay. However, for a guy with only 12 fights, he has, uh, being a three division champion as well. Okay. Um, looks like, uh, he's moving up to be an undisputed champ at 135. You know, he's saying he wants to stay at 135. He wants to fight, uh, Mikey Garcia, you know, at 135. But like I said, it means that's, I think that's suicide for Mikey Garcia. If he comes way back down to 135, it, it'll be a good fight. Okay, because like I say, you know, once you go up two weight classes, then you drop back down two weight classes, you're never the same, right? And so it means we've seen this time and time before, all right? Now, with um, this number one pound for pound things, okay, our ESPN, you know, they said, hey, you know, this is the reason why he is the number one pound for pound. But the guy, he was outmatched, all right? You know, he was... um you know, shy to it. Like once he felt Lomachenko's power, okay? It, it wasn't like really competitive. Like the Linares, Jorge Linares, when Lomachenko uh, right shoulder was broke, was uh, hurt, okay? I mean, I understand he went into that fight as a wounded lamb, but it was a competitive fight. You know, Lomachenko got knocked down, he got back up. You know, he uh, finished off Jorge Linares, that's a competitive fight. Now, fights like that makes you the number one pound for pound. But when you have a guy, all right, who's just, you know, balled up and just look like he's being bullied all night long, you know, nah, that really doesn't, you know, put you in the number one pound for pound. But he just looked so amazing doing what he did last night. <laughs> you have to say he's number one pound for pound, okay? But yeah, to me, it's a draw between Terrence Crawford and Vasily Lomachenko. I mean, this right here, I, I just can't seem to make my mind up on who is going to be the number one pound for pound on my list. It's between Terrence Crawford and Vasily Lomachenko. I definitely don't have uh, Earl Spence high on my uh, pound for pound list. I mean, I don't have him like number two, okay? I probably have him like uh, three or four, okay? But not definitely at not number two, all right? Now, same thing is going to go with this guy. And I, I, we talked about it so many times. Teofimo Lopez, okay? You know, yeah, he, he's talking all this junk. He wants to fight the guy. Yeah, man, he got balls to call him out, okay? No, he's doing it because he believes that he can beat him. But once he get inside that ring and he feels Lomachenko's power, he see his IQ, his mental game, he's going to be just like any other, you know, opponent of Vasily Lomachenko. This is going to be a, another Anthony Corolla, okay? Now, some say that, you know, <laughs> anyone can beat Vasily, Devin Haney, Mikey Garcia, Felix Trinidad. I mean, not Felix. Uh, man, I, I said Felix Trinidad. But, um, man, I, I, I forget the boy's name, uh, Javante Davis. But who knows, okay? Um, I, I wouldn't say Devin Haney could beat him. All right, Devin Haney is not even in the guy's division. Devin Haney is fighting at 140. All right. Um, someone say even uh, Marcelo Wild uh, Wilder can beat him. Oh, but Marcelo Wilder is a cruiserweight. Okay, he's not in um, Lomachenko's division. Okay, you got to pick fighters that's in this man's division. Okay, not people way out there like Marcelo's uh, Wilder. My goodness. <laughs> wow, him versus Vasily. Oh, who will win? Hold on. So, anyways, man, uh, uh, it's like this. It, it looks easy on the outside, but when you get inside and get punched in the mouth the first time, you're like, whoa, this is not what I expected. That's what it seems like with Silly Lomachenko. I mean, hey, he's 30. Like I said, he's 30 years old. He's still young. His reflexes are still good. You know, he has about to the age of maybe, what, 33 or so, 34, before we start seeing to slow down all right so anyways that's my takes on this this is cmd boxing reports and i'll catch you on the next one